Hey there folks, Rel here. In the background you'll see some gameplay from uh, Planetside 2 and a few other games as I share some thoughts on better gaming. Today I'd like to talk about why I think we need a better payment model when it comes to free-to-play games and why I believe a couple games are headed in the right direction. The premise of free-to-play games is that you have an extremely low barrier to entry and anyone can pick up the game and jump on board because it doesn't cost them anything. And if it turns out that they don't like the game or they don't uh, want to play it anymore, they don't need to try and get their money back, they just uninstall it. But there are many problems with the free-to-play model which creates some really interesting challenges. One problem is that a player has no initial investment in the game and because they have no investment, they don't, uh, they don't have any attachment to their account or their characters and because of this, you're going to see a lot of griefing, a lot of trolling, a lot of hacking. In Planetside 2, this has definitely been the case and only recently, a year later, have most of the hacking issues been resolved. On top of that, you have conflicting mentalities, so paying versus non-paying players feel like they're entitled to different things. Non-paying players generally feel entitled to be able to keep up with paying players easily in terms of equipment and level, and this doesn't make sense in games where you can pay money to circumvent the amount of time spent playing, because if it did, there wouldn't really be a point in spending money at all. At the same time, paying players feel as if developers and non-paying players should care more about what they have to say, placing more emphasis on their word than that of, uh, of the non-paying players. And this is an entitlement problem because the developers need to be able to balance the game around the entire player base, not just the people shelling out the cash. Honestly though, that uh, last bit is actually wishful thinking. When it comes down to it, games usually get watered down and uh, you cater to the lowest common denominator. And since you're trying to appease the majority of your player base, which consists mostly of free two players, so that uh, one day they're going to spend money, the veterans end up getting the shaft. Very rarely do you see a proper line in the sand that says, we didn't intend to hold your hand through the game, you need a certain level of skill and time to play it properly. But playing into that, you also have the concept of pay to win. I say concept because few games in the modern era are flatly pay to win, and the ones that are blatantly pay to win usually have very small communities and fade out of the mainstream very quickly. But at the same time, other modern games that claim not to be pay to win are hiding behind an excuse or a sort of technical definition. The developers like to say that uh, you know it's not pay to win because the things that you can buy that affect the game you can also unlock while playing. And this is completely true, but in my opinion it's also a scapegoat. So if you think back about a year ago, when Planetside 2 was fresh and new, and imagine that you were one of the few people to buy a shotgun or rocket pods or lock-on launcher or your second burster, you have a huge undisputed advantage over everybody else that did not yet have access to that weapon because they were busy grinding out experience to get access to those. And that's pay to win, albeit for a limited time. You have paid to gain access to weapons that no one else has access to and also cannot replicate the effects of until those people have played for a few months or decide to spend money themselves. So it's walking a very, very thin line, if nothing else. Still, there's something to be said about giving players the option to pay for their game instead of forcing a subscription on them. And free-to-play games are the end-all testament to this. They make lots and lots and lots of money, more than traditional subscription-based models. Even World of Warcraft is considering going free-to-play later on down the line. It just makes sense. DC Universe Online was originally subscription-based, and after they turned free-to-play, as soon as they opened those free-to-play doors, they gained 1 million new players in the first week, and their daily revenue jumped by 700%. That said, the free-to-play model is usually a choice between time or money. Alongside cosmetic items that have no impact on the game, it's why you see convenience items like experience boosts that decrease the amount of time that you're going to be spending in-game to achieve the same progress as a free-to-play player that has a lot of time on their hands. This in itself is fair, money or time. But what ends up happening in many games, uh, free-to-play RPGs in particular, is that you have players who spend both time and money and these players get a significant advantage over the non-paying players or players who aren't so avid because you're going to outlevel them, you're going to outgear them, you're going to be able to control the economy via supply and demand before everybody else does. And this isn't so much a problem, I suppose, as it is an eventuality. 
Because you should be rewarded for spending lots of time in game and you should be rewarded for spending money on the game. But to say that that sort of model doesn't cause conflicts would be a bold-faced lie. There are ways to incorporate the two payment models better than just having a free-to-play game and a cash shop slapped onto it and then hoping that the balance kind of evens itself out over time. This is why I would like to see a better payment model. One that properly combines the two worlds of free-to-play and pay-to-play. World of Warcraft actually had a trial period at one point, it's probably still around, but you could make a character and then you could play for free up to level 15 or 20 or something, and having lower level characters play for free meant that you can drop in, you can taste the game with no real attachment, like any free-to-play game, and then you are encouraged to purchase a subscription in order to keep progressing after you've theoretically become more attached to your character. And at the same time, the paying players who were creating alternate characters had starting zones that were more populated, which made things less boring for them. So it's a subscription-based game with an infinite trial attached. Not a bad way to combine the two genres, but you're still forcing people into a subscription to experience the vast majority of the game. Now if you look at EVE Online, a game that has 500,000 players, you also have trial accounts, but they're not infinite. After 60 days or so, your trial account is locked, and you have to add game to that account in order to keep playing. But EVE does this through an in-game item called a Pilot's License Extension, or Plex. And Plex are bought with real money, so kind of a token for your subscription. And you either use it to fuel your own playtime, or you can auction it off to other players for in-game currency. So what this does is it allows free-to-play players play infinitely for free, provided that they can keep purchasing Plex for the in-game currency, and it allows paying players to gain in-game currency for selling game time. That's a really smart way to do things, especially since the entire economy is player-driven in EVE Online. And Wildstar is actually going to be one of the first big games to follow in EVE Online's footsteps with the same sort of payment model. And while I really, really like this concept, I don't think that it would apply well to games where the point is not to gain experience and isn't to level up and isn't to farm. If you take Planetside 2, for example, the intent of the game as a whole is to work as a squad, team, a faction, to conquer, whatever, whatever, and if you were to implement the sort of system in Planetside 2, the game would be centered purely around whatever gives the most experience points at the time, thus defeating the game's intended purpose. So how could you create a payment model that gives players an option and incentive to pay for the game, because every company needs to make money, that's just how the world works, a payment model that doesn't create a power disparity based on how much money you decide to spend, and a model that levels the entitlement playing field so that both sides are looked after and developed for equally. Many games opt to go purely for cosmetics. Uh, Path of Exile is a great example of that, and while it has convenience items, it stays true to the core of the game because there's nothing that detracts from it. Instead of giving you convenience items that uh, give you experience boosts or otherwise diminish the amount of time that you actually need to play, you're encouraged to play the game the way that it was meant to be played. And this is a good solution, and an easy one. Another way to solve power disparity, at least in games like Planetside 2, would be just to add a simple loan system. Let's say you could purchase up to three weapons or abilities in advance so that you have access to them immediately and then you would be able to pay these weapons off over time at an increased cost, or with interest. That way, I can immediately pick up rocket pods, a shotgun, or my second burster, and become effective in those areas without having to just suck it up and deal with it until I've grinded out enough certs to purchase them outright. I think that there are many other solutions out there as well, ones that can create stronger games as a whole, instead of just being a monetization method that's tacked on as an afterthought. If I had a choice, I'd like to completely restructure the interactions between free and paying players from the ground up. There's a game that I wanted to create, uh, well, one of many, but in this game I have a very specific payment model in mind, and without delving into the game's concept too much, it'd be that every player is a part of a mercenary organization, they do missions in a massively multiplayer universe, blah 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 blah, and it would be both a free-to-play and a subscription-based game, but the catch is that the paying players become figureheads. They essentially get to manage and mentor the non-paying players. All players, regardless of whether you are free or paying, would go out on the same sorts of missions and do the same sorts of things, but the non-paying players would then pay a tax 
a portion of their mission rewards to their manager. These subscribing managers can trade, draft, and drop non-paying players just like you would a sports team. And the real kicker is that the managers must also invest a portion of their earnings back into their team in the form of item upgrades and bonuses and weapons and whatever else. The non-paying players can also choose to drop their manager or they can join an organization run by NPCs and it gets uh, a lot more complicated than this but what you've done with this sort of system is create an interesting meta that doesn't stymie the gameplay, in fact it adds to it. It incentivizes players to become paying subscribers so that they can be part of this meta. It encourages free players to become a valuable asset to their team so that they can get really cool kickbacks. It encourages managers to educate and advance their own team members so that they perform better, which in turn means more rewards for the manager. And most importantly, it helps foster a community that supports and develops as a whole, regardless of whether you're paying or not. And this leads to a much better experience for everyone involved, including the developers. Will this sort of system work in Planet Side 2? No, not without completely revitalizing the game, which isn't going to happen. But the point is that a system like this can be implemented into certain types of games. And if I had the opportunity to design and produce my own game, which is a lifelong dream, you can bet that it would have a system like this in place. I'm sure that there are a lot of good payment models out there, but for free-to-play games, I think that the best sort of payment model has to be built into the game from the ground up. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and I would really like to hear you weigh in on this. Not just my concept of a better payment model, but how payment models affect gaming as a whole. Do you think we're in a good place currently? Do you think that uh, free-to-play models lead too much to cosmetic development and not enough meaningful content? Do you have a favorite payment model that you'd like to see in other games? Let me know all of that in the comments section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.